Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. And I'm so excited because scrapbook.com had sent along their new Christmas release. And when I tell you I fell in love with these images, they released some amazing new Christmas stamps. So I'm gonna walk you through the different images and then we're gonna create a bunch of different cards. And also I've got everything linked down below in the description box and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Now without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so this first one is called Winter Wishes and Spruce Sprigs. I absolutely love this girl carrying the gifts here. I love that there's kind of a huge stack of gifts that's covering her face. You've got a nice wreath, some different greenery you can put behind this deer, and then of course this amazing adorable deer in the corner, and a couple different sentiments to go along with it. I fell in love with this one called Snow Globe because you can use this globe image down here to put a bunch of snowflakes in and create a little scene with all of these different houses. I'll definitely share an example using this in today's video. Next, Joyful Ride is a really fun one. I love when cars have different trees on top, so of course you could use this tree individually and it's got a couple layering pieces, or you could stack it on top of this car for a really fun look. You've also got a couple little ornaments and a great big joy sentiment in the center. This next Christmas tree set has a similar idea with the solid and then the detailed version of the trees so you can layer them up. You've got a nice big version, a medium one, and then if you also have the Joyful Ride set, this is a smaller version of the same tree. You've also got some different embellishments, bows, ornaments, and then a little face and some feet and arms if you wanna kind of give some personality to these trees and turn them into little tree people. This one is super fun and I love the layering and buildability of the set. The Home for Christmas set is super cool too. You've got this fireplace with the stockings on it, a nice tree that's in a different style than the other Christmas trees, a couple of different ornaments up top as well as strings so you can decorate them. And then you've got a bunch of different layering images to build different gifts, which I love the layering images because you can layer up different colors and really make it your own. So now that we've had a quick overview, let's jump in and make some Christmas cards. All right, now I wanna start off with the Christmas trees set and do some stamp layering. So I'm starting off with this medium tree and I'm gonna line it up right in the center of my A2 size cardstock, and then I'll lift it up with the misty lid. So once I've applied a little bit of color, I'm going to bring it over and stamp it down. And this is the great part about using the Misty, is if we need to double stamp it, we totally can. And now we can go in with different colors and stamp in the exact same spot. I got this far into stamping and my ink just wasn't performing like it usually does. And sometimes these photopolymer stamps are great quality, but they've got a little bit of a coating on it from manufacturing that you might need to clean off so it takes ink a little bit better. So I'm gonna go in with my finger and just kind of rub it on the surface of the stamp. And this can really help prime photopolymer stamps. If you notice you're not getting as great of an inked result as possible, the oil from your finger will kind of remove some of that. You could also try going in using a little bit of Versamark ink, put it on top, and this is a clear sticky ink, which will kind of help prime the surface of your stamp. Lots of stamps need this. It's totally normal when it's first out of the package to have to prime it a little bit. And then once you've done this one time, it should take ink for the rest of its life. So I'm starting off again using a little bit of overzealous ink. I'm gonna tap on some ink all around this tree add some to the top there and you can already see like it's so much more solid. I was wondering why it wasn't stamping perfectly. Oh my gosh, it's so crisp. Next I'm gonna bring in a little bit of Viper and start filling in some of those areas that I didn't do with overzealous. And if you need to just soften a couple little areas, I just like to go in with my finger to get a little bit of control and just kind of tap some of that area out to not get too much texture, but it is a tree, so it should have some texture in the end from the branches. All right, so we're kind of filling it in with different colors. Then I'll bring in a little bit of fake plant and just again, using the corner of the ink pad, we'll go into the areas we may have missed. So just kind of mapping it out where I wanna see a little bit of that color. Then one more time, I'm gonna dab out the color with my finger. You could also use a blending tool, but I do like that I can get a smaller area with this. And then I'm gonna go in and stamp it down. All right, can you guys tell that is so much smoother of stamping and I love all the different color variation we're able to get in there, not doing any stamp layering, but just using the solid tree. All right, so now that we've primed the stamp a bit, it should take the ink a lot better. Here I'm going in with a little bit of overzealous to start out with, and I'm going to just fully ink the tree stamp. You can see here when we stamp this down, giving it some good pressure, you can see it's a lot better of a stamped impression. It's super solid, and that's gonna smooth out a little bit over time as well. Now to add shading, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of fake plant, and this time I'm gonna go all the way around the edge, just rolling on a little bit of color using the edge of my ink pad. 
I'm then able to go in and just tap using my blending tool to kind of create a smoother transition and get rid of any harsh marks that the ink pad might have left behind. So then we can go in, stamp this down, and it starts to give it some really beautiful shading on that tree. I love how it's lighter in the center and really darker on the edge. To continue stamping this design, I want three trees across on this card. So I've moved over my paper just a little bit and I'm going to line it up exactly where I want the next tree and place it on my magnet. Then I can do the same stamping technique with a little bit of overzealous to start out with as kind of a base layer of color. And this blending tool trick really is a game changer to get a nice smooth blend instead of that harsh line that the ink pad usually would leave. All right, we'll go in and then stamp that down and check that out. And then line it up exactly where we want the next tree to stamp. All right, so there we have our little scene of trees, and I love how these stamped with the highlight in the center. I think it's just beautiful, and it gives it so much depth. All right, then I'm gonna go in with the detail layer because I wanna add a bit more dimension here, and I'll line this up with the center tree, and this isn't supposed to be like exactly on top of the tree. It's supposed to be a little sketchier and a little bit more rough, so you don't need to line it up exactly perfect. And for this, I wanna go in with the darkest color fake plant and stamp this down to give a bit more depth to the tree. So I'm gonna share a couple different ways you can stamp this layer, but for this first one, just going in using a darker color to give more dimension to the tree is really fun. And it's great that we're inside the Misty stamping tool because we can stamp this more than once to make the color darker and darker if we want to. And you can keep stamping on top of each other until you get the desired look. So I think that's perfect. And then again, I'm going to shift it. This is why I love the Misty, because all we need to do is shift it to line it up in the same spot that we had it earlier. That looks perfect. I'll place my magnet down and we can go in and stamp this second layer on our next tree. All right, there are some large and small little dots that we can use as ornaments from that set. So I'm gonna go in using a little bit of Bee Sting Lunar Paste. I'm gonna grab my palette knife from the Paste Tool Set, and I'm just going to apply a little bit off to the side on a sheet of plastic here, and that's gonna act as sort of a palette to lift the color off of. Then I'm gonna go in with a domed foam blending tool to lift off a little bit of that paste, and a little bit goes a long way when you're stamping with the Lunar Paste. So I'm gonna test this off to the side just to make sure that it's going to work perfectly for me. If you want to, you can dip it kind of into a really small area like an ink pad would, and then stamp it down or you can apply it down with that blending tool and you get these really great little dots and I love stamping with it and once this dries, it'll be super shiny. So I'm gonna continue going in here. I actually like this kind of stamp pad method. I'm literally going into like the most shallow part of this and then I'm going to just go in and stamp it down. And when you're stamping with lunar paste, you wanna make a really quick coverage to the paper. You don't wanna hold it there for a super long time because lunar paste starts to dry really quickly so it might rip the cardstock if it starts adhering down to the surface. So you just want to take like one second to stamp that down and lift it up really quickly once you're done. And I'm just going to go all the way around and apply these little red ornaments all over the trees. And it just makes it extra festive. I love what that adds to the surface there. Now, I really love this method, but you could also use something like embossing powder and emboss these. You just want something that's going to be nice and opaque like this lunar paste so that it stands out on top and covers the colors underneath rather than kind of blend it in because an ink pad would just kind of soak in and not really show the color like this. Now this dries really quickly since it's super thin and once it's dry, you can sort of see that nice shine and brilliance that it adds on top of the trees. And don't worry with any excess, we can take our palette knife and scrape it right back into the jar which is super nice, and then clean this off with a little bit of water until it comes nice and clean. All right, to finish off the card, I'm going to stamp the berries and branches background stamp. I've grabbed a little bit of fake plant ink, and I'm using some fern cardstock from Spellbinders. Just going to ink up my background stamp, and we just want sort of a tone on tone stamp to look. Whenever I don't always know what to do with the card, this is a great option to give some texture in the background, but not take away from the focal point. And I think these sort of little branches will go really well with the Christmas and Christmas tree that we have going on. So I'm going to grab my fern cardstock, place it right down into my background stamp, and then I'll give some good pressure all the way around to make sure that the stamp transfers. 
All right, and when we lift that off, check out that beautiful stamping that we've done there. I think it just adds the perfect amount of texture and it won't take away from the focal point. If you've seen my videos, you know I'm all about adding depth to the project. So for one last little layer here, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of fake plant ink and my little blending tool, and I'm just going to lightly blend on the edge here. It's a super simple little detail, but it just adds the slightest bit more depth onto the cardstock. And by creating this outside edge a bit darker, we're actually drawing our eye into the center, which is gonna be a bit lighter, and that's where our focal point trees are gonna be, so it really brings your eye to the focal point. To finish this card off, I'm using a sentiment from the Joyful Christmas Sentiments Glimmer Hot Foil Plate Set. I love this one because in one pass, you can foil all the sentiments, and then with one die, you can cut them all out, so you can get lots of sentiments through just a few passes. I keep any of the extras foiled back here so that I don't need to pull up my foil machine every time I want one of these sentiments, and I think that I'm going to use the Happy Holiday sentiment for this card. So I've just added a bit of foam tape to that sentiment to pop it up, and then I'll add it right over the center of that middle Christmas tree. And I just love how much shine that finished foiled sentiment adds to the card. I love the bold and traditional Christmas look to this card, and I think it's great because you could give it to anyone. And we were even able to stamp using a little bit of lunar paste, which was so much fun. All right, now for the second card, I wanna show a different way of stamping those trees. So I'm gonna start off with this large solid tree, and I'm going to lift it up with my misty door once again. And with these larger stamps too, you also wanna make sure that there's no air bubbles in it. So I sometimes like to lift it off the misty door a little bit and then just place it right back down to get rid of any air bubbles, which will help make it stamp better. And then also I want to ensure to prime this one too. You can see that just the oils on my finger makes it a lot less glossy. That's gonna help take the ink a little bit better and remove that sort of factory coating like you saw earlier. Now I'm gonna try something a little bit different that I usually wouldn't do, but I think it'll be kind of fun. So here I'm gonna go in using orange. We're gonna make an orange Christmas tree. You could do sort of pinks or reds. It doesn't always have to be green, and I wanted to show that today. You can kind of go in with some unexpected color combinations and make a more modern and fun and playful Christmas card. So I'm going in using a little bit of guppy. I'm gonna stamp down that first layer of my ink here. And of course, I'm gonna add depth and dimension like always. So I'm gonna go in next using a little bit of Roar, which is kind of a little bit darker of an orange color. And I'm just going to take this ink and once again, use the edge of my ink pad to add it all around the edge of the tree here. And then with this, I'm just going to again, make sure to use my blending tool to get rid of any of those really harsh marks and make it blend together a little bit smoother. All right, so I'll flip that over. I'll stamp this down and you can see the depth is really starting to build up with those first two colors. This is a really pretty orange color. And for our last tone here, I'm gonna use a bit of bee sting, which is a red tone, just to go right at the edge and add a little bit of color right around the outside to make it the darkest. And then again, that blending tool trick, just to make sure everything is nicely blended. And we'll stamp that down. All right, I really like that deep, rich, and intense color. And for this next layer, we're going to grab the detail layer of that tree. We'll line it right up with our tree. And again, it's kind of a more playful layer, so it doesn't need to be perfect. And once it's lined up, we'll pick it up with our misty door. All right, and for this layer, I want to do some stamping with a lunar paste to show you can stamp these larger detail layers too. So here I'm gonna use a little bit of Slippery When Wet lunar paste, which is this nice yellow gold kind of color. I'll add a bit down onto a piece of acetate again to make a nice um, palette. And then I'll go in using that domed blending tool and just go in and quickly apply our color down. Again, when we're working with lunar paste, we wanna act quite quickly because we don't want it to start drying on us when we do our stamping. I've heard some complaints about it ripping people's cardstock and it really is because you gotta move really quickly with this. You gotta stamp it down and don't leave it on there for too long. You gotta lift it off pretty quickly. And then when it comes to this type of stamping, you're easily able to layer it up several times. So if you don't love the first result, you can always go in a second time, reload it with a bit more lunar paste, and then keep stamping on top to build up the layers of paste. Now that is really pretty already, and again, I'll show you once it's dry, but then we gotta go in and quickly clean everything off. So you wanna clean off your stamp. I like to douse it in a little bit of water, and then I'll use my paper towel to get in there and clean this out. Now, if there's some detailed areas in the stamp that you can't get the paste out of, this is where some sort of stamp cleaner really comes in handy. So I like this Rub It Scrub It pad. You can use any sort of stamp sponge. And this is just going to get into those detailed areas and be able to scrub out some of that paste. 
So this is super helpful to have. It's only a few bucks and it's really easy to clean off surfaces like this. And then I'll just go in and dry the stamp off and you can see it did a really great job at cleaning that out. All right, and here is that layer once it's dry. It's got so much shine to it and it's got lots of texture too. But I love that we were able to build that up in our Misty to get all of the shine. To finish this off, I'm going to go in and fussy cut this tree out. I like to leave a little bit of a white border all the way around the image. And this is pretty easy to cut out since there's not too many little details. I like to use my Fiskars spring assist scissors since they spring back out at me. And they're easy to get into these little areas as you cut. So then I'm gonna go in using the Geo Snowflakes Glimmer Foil Plate from my holiday collection. I think this is gonna create a super cool background. But I'm gonna do something totally different with this. So instead of foiling, we're gonna emboss with this to get tons of texture. I'm using the new universal plate system. I'm gonna use platform base and the platform top. Then I'm gonna place down the rubber mat right on top, which is E. Then for my cardstock, I'm just going to quickly mist this down a little bit. This is gonna help the paper sort of form to the embossing and not crack too much. And then I'm going to go in with the foil plate and I'm going to place it with the design side facing down towards the rubber mat because it's going to press into the rubber mat. And then we will place the D adapter plate right on top. And then we'll run it right through our die cutting machine to emboss. All right, you can see it definitely embossed all right. It's nice and pressed into that design. So I'm gonna grab a little tweezers and start pulling that up a bit. And then there we have our cardstock. And check out that beautiful embossed design that we have in there. It gives so much amazing texture and you could use either side. All right, and you guys know me well enough by now. I'm gonna go in with a dark maroon color. Here I'm using some Game Over and I'm just going to go in on the edges and darken things up a little bit. Again, just to add that sort of depth and dimension and draw your eye to the center. I do this on a lot of my cards. I find it's really important to sort of tie things together. So if something feels a little bit unfinished or you're not quite sure what still to add to it, but it needs a little finishing touch, try adding this ink to the edge. It really does sort of change things up and add lots of rich color to your card. Then I'll add foam tape on the back of the tree and I'm going to place it right down onto our card. And that gives it a little bit more dimension. And then for a sentiment, I wanna use the Christmas silhouette stamp set. I love the images in this one, but I also, there is a ton of different sentiments you can use. And I think I'm gonna use wishing you and yours a wonderful holiday season and a blessed new year. You can see I've used this one because it's really stained, but it's a great set. And for this, I'm just gonna take a sentiment acrylic block and I'm gonna go in here and curve the stamp so that it goes right around this tree and it sort of fits in the design really nicely. I love to do this with photopolymer stamps. They bend super easily and then it sort of fits in the design a little bit better. So here I'll just use a little bit of VersaFine Clear to ink this up, stamp it right down onto some stark white cardstock. And I always like to go in with a layer of clear heat embossing powder. This ink stays wet long enough to throw over a layer and then I'll heat set this until it's clear and shiny. And then for the sentiment, I'll just quickly fussy cut it out. Sentiments are really easy to cut right around and I find that it gives a little bit more of a finished look rather than just leaving it on a bigger strip of rectangular cardstock. Then I'll just take the sentiment and pop it up right underneath that tree. And again, I just love how it fits under there perfectly. So there is that finished card. I love how that tree turned out. It's a little bit unique of a color, but it was so much fun to do and add all of that shine. And there's so much beautiful texture in that background using the Geo Snowflakes Glimmer Foil Plate. So if you didn't know you can emboss with those, this is going to open a whole new world with lots of textures. All right, next I wanna create my own little snow globe using the snow globe set. So I'm going to pull out this larger snow globe image. Then I'm going to place it onto an acrylic block. And especially when you've got an image with like large open area that's not supposed to stamp, this is where getting out all those air bubbles is going to be super important to make sure that none of those areas are going to stick up and stamp. Then I'm going to go in using some VersaFine Clair ink and I'm going to ink up the snow globe. And I'm going to just quickly stamp that right down onto the card. And if you know me, you know I gotta add down a layer of clear heat embossing to make this nice and shiny. And then I'll heat set this until it's nice and shiny. Then I'm gonna take a couple of these little snowflakes and I'm just going to place them all over this snow globe. And I'm using an acrylic block right on top. So I know kind of where to place them all around on the card. So I'll throw in three of those larger snowflakes and then they've got really 
tiny ones too. So I'll place those little guys in as well, kind of sporadically. And then I'll go in and use a little bit of Versamark clear sticky ink to do some more embossing. So then again, we can flip this over and they're all perfectly aligned since we had it right over top. And then I'll stamp that right down onto the snow globe. And then again, to create a resist, I'm gonna go in using clear heat embossing powder, but here you could use white as well. And then again, I'll heat set that until it's clear and shiny. All right, now I'm gonna mask off the bottom of this snow globe just by using a little bit of mint tape since it's a nice straight line there. And then I can go in and do my blending. And for that blending, I'm gonna use a little bit of no diving, which is my darker blue color. And I'm just going to start that right at the bottom here. I'm gonna start it kind of on the mint tape there so that the darkest point goes there. And then I'll start blending out a little bit of this darker color. Now I don't wanna overwhelm the snow globe with this darker color, I just wanna add some shadow and depth kind of at the bottom. And then I'm gonna go in using a little bit of breakup blue and I can tap off some of that color before we go in and just start blending this out until the top. And this is a much lighter blue color. You can see it's really going to kind of fade it out and give it more of that snowy and icy feel. But I wanted that depth sort of at the bottom still. All right, and when I lift off that mid tape, it's going to have perfectly masked off the bottom of the snow globe so that it doesn't have a color down there. For this, I'm gonna use a little bit of Weeping Willow ink, which is a nice dark brown color. So I'll go in with a paintbrush and a little bit of water to start out with. I always add down water to first prepare the cardstock to make it so that it'll take the ink because if you go straight in with the ink, it'll just sink right in. Whereas if the cardstock's a little bit wet at first, it'll kind of, the ink will sit on top of the surface and sort of blend more easily. So here you can see we can get a nice wash of that color since the cardstock is already wet. And then I'll go in using a little bit less water and that same color, and then we can just tap the color in on the edges. And since we're using less water, it's gonna be a lot more concentrated and it's gonna give us this really beautiful shaded effect. Now I wanna add the snow globe to a different background, so I'm just going to go in and quickly fussy cut this out. And this one is super simple since it's just a really easy circle shape. All right, now there's a couple of solid houses and little trees you can add right inside the snow globe, but I wanted my house to have a little bit more shading and I wanted to be able to color it in. So I'm gonna go in using the Christmas Village background stamp. This has a bunch of different houses and trees you can create a whole scene with, but I'm just gonna peel out one of the little houses that I wanna use. I think this is adorable. And then I'm going to stamp it out using a little bit of black ink right onto my stark white cardstock. And when you stamp this, it's made with a bunch of tiny little dots. So you'll see there's a little bit more shading in some areas. That's because there's more dots in that area. So it gives some really great depth and dimension. And then of course, you guys know the drill by now. I'm gonna go in using a little bit of clear heat embossing powder and heat it till it's nice and shiny. All right, then again, I'll go in with my ink pads and create a little bit of a palette of color that I want to use by just applying it down right onto my craft sheet. Then when I go in and paint, I always like to, again, start off with a layer of clear water just to prepare the surface of the cardstock to take any of the inks that we add. I'm gonna start off using a little bit of Weeping Willow with quite a bit of water to add a nice wash of a tan color to this house. And then I'll use the same Weeping Willow color with less water, and then we can add some kind of shading into the corners and around the edges where everything meets. This is gonna give it some nice depth and dimension to the image. And then on the roof, I'll go in with Weeping Willow with a lot less water to add lots of shading down. And we don't need to focus too much on the shading because all those little dots will add depth and dimension by itself. And then I'll pop that little house up on some foam tape to add some dimension. And I think that's just so adorable right in the center of that snow globe. Now to finish off this background, I'm gonna use this wood grain background stamp. And this is one of my favorites to get a really great realistic wood grain. If you want it to be nice and dark like this background, you would use Weeping Willow on top of Craft to get a nice kind of darker wood grain tone. But for this card, I want it to be a bit more subtle. So I'm gonna go in using Gur, which is kind of a mid-tone brown color, and I'm going to use the wood grain stamp. Now you could use the more smooth side or the more side with knots on it. I'm gonna go kind of right in the center here, and I'm just going to ink up this stamp all over using this Gur ink. And this wood grain stamp is made up of a bunch of tiny little dots. So it's going to add shading where there's more clusters of dots and less shading where there's less dots on the stamp. It's really cool. And there we have that really great wood grain. And you can totally see the difference between this other background with the different intensities depending on what ink color you wanna use. 
but doesn't it just look so realistic? I've never seen a background stamp like this with so much detail. So I love how it looks. All right, then I'm gonna add another foiled sentiment. This time I foiled it down in red. This is one of the joyful Christmas sentiments that says season's greetings. And I'll add this right below the snow globe on some foam tape. So there is a look at the finished card. I love how this turned out with that really fun snow globe. And of course, you can build whatever you want in there, whether you wanna put a critter or the different houses, it's really fun that you can build your own snow globe. And also that wood grain background is just so realistic and finishes off this card background really nicely. All right, you guys, we're in the home stretch here, but we got one more card to go because this joyful ride set is just calling my name. I love the little car, and I just got to stack that tree on top. And I also wanna play with this really fun kind of swirled sentiment there. I think it's awesome. Starting off with that car image, which I'm going to stamp down using some black ink. So I'm just going to ink that up really nicely. And then I'll stamp that right down. And there we go, we've got our nice car image. And for this, you guys should know the drill by now, we're gonna go in and throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder and heat set it. To stamp down that tree and make sure I get perfect alignment, I wanna use my Misty stamping tool, but this is a little bit warped to just place right in my Misty. So I'm gonna use the scrapboard.com clearly amazing mat. I have been loving this mat. It's nice and sticky, so it'll hold down my cardstock perfectly. So I'm just going to place this down and it just holds it a little bit better than the magnet. It'll still warp up a little bit, but at least it's not like flying up. All right, then I'll peel off that tree image, and this one is just the perfect size to fit nicely on top of that car. And then I'll pick it up using the Misty door. And again, to make sure I get perfect stamping for the first time since it's a solid image, I'm gonna go in and rub my oil of my finger right on top to make sure the stamp is primed to take that ink nicely. And you know what, I'm gonna stamp the exact same way as I did earlier, starting off using a bit of overzealous, which is that lighter green color. We'll ink up the tree. And then to get a really nice shading, I'm going to go in using fake plant, and I'm going to, again, follow along by stamping all the way around the edges of the tree to get some nice depth. And I'll go in with my blending tool to make sure everything is nicely blended out. And stamp that down. Now there's another detail layer with this tree stamp as well. So I'll kind of line it up with the tree. All right, and give it some good pressure so it stamps. And for the finishing touch, there's this little bow that's included in the set too. So I'm just going to stamp that down using a little bit of black VersaFine Clear ink again of the tree for a little finishing touch. All right, now to get it off the sticky mat, I'm just going to peel it up like that by curling the mat. That works really easily. And then I'll go in and place my acetate right back over top to make sure no dust gets on this for the next time I wanna use it. All right, now I'm gonna use a little bit of Love Struck. And for a darker shade, I'll also use a little bit of Game Over for some depth and dimension. So for this coloring, I'm gonna follow the same steps that I've been doing. It works really well, and I encourage you guys to try it if you struggle with water coloring. So adding that water down first has been a game changer for me. And then I'll go in with the first layer of Love Struck, and then I'll add a full wash of color to this car. And you can see, right when we hit that water there, it just really bl blends easily, and it's not going to sink right into the cardstock, so we can get a nice, super smooth layer to that car. When we wanna add some shading, I go in with less water so we can have more control and a darker tone. And I can go in and just add some depth all around this car. And I just add where there are lines, like where things meet. So where these doors meet, we're gonna add a little bit of shading. Where this wheel well is, it'll have a little bit of shading to it. So just all kind of around the car. All right, now I'm gonna create a fun background using this kind of swirled sentiment. I really like how it looks. And I wanna create a background that the car can sit on top of going to peel this off of the backer sheet there. I'm gonna place it right down because it'll kind of form back into the shape it was made in. And then I'm gonna go in using just an acrylic block to pick this up. And then I can go right in using a bit of Love Struck ink, which is the ink we used to color in the car. I'm gonna ink this up. And then I'm gonna go right onto my Stark White cardstock and I'm gonna create a background by stamping once then I'm gonna lift it up, move it down a little bit. I'm gonna stamp it twice. We can even kind of shift it to the left or right. Stamp it twice and then shift it again and stamp it one more time. So it gives you three generations of that image, a dark, a medium, and a light, which is what I love about this. And then I'm gonna go in 
and keep repeating this all the way down the card. So I'm going to stamp it once, shift it, stamp it twice, shift it one more time, and then stamp it a third time. And you can see I'm shifting it on the edges too, so it's not perfect. It's gonna give us a really fun and playful look. And I'm gonna keep doing this all the way down the card. So don't think of these sentiments just as you know, you have to use them as a sentiment. This one to me stood out more as kind of a design element that I can use in a background like this to make something really fun and playful. All right, now I've cut down this panel and I've cut down a panel that I want to be a border all the way around this, but I wanna match it to my stamping and to the color of the car. So I'm gonna go in using a bit of Love Struck ink and my blending tool, and here's a little bit of a life hack for you. You can take white cardstock and make it any color you want just by using your ink. And so to do this, I'm just gonna go in right on the edge and just blend a little color on. It's super simple to do. You don't need to be super neat because nobody's gonna see this edge here. And we'll just go in and make our own colored cardstock. Now this is especially important when you want it to like match your project perfectly. This is the way to do it. So use whatever color ink you've been using on your card and you can create whatever color you want. And you can see we've got a perfect border with our red color. All right, then I'll go in and add down my car and the tree right on top of our stamped background. And I don't do this much, but I think I'm gonna leave it. I don't think I'm gonna add a sentiment. It's kind of self-explanatory what it is, and I think the card is beautiful as is. So here we have our finished card. I love that really fun tree on top of the car, and how you can kind of build those images together, or you could use the tree by itself. And I love that stamped background that we did using the sentiment. It's a really fun way to create your own background using the sentiments from the stamp sets. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. It was a ton of fun walking through that scrapbook.com release and creating a bunch of different cards. Give a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment down below as to which card was your favorite. Also down there is the full supplies list to everything that I used and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye.